Welcome back everyone, session five. Let's get right to it. We've been praying in different ways. We've been praying for different things. This week, we're gonna talk about what does it mean to pray for a breakthrough? You know, there are times in life where we've been praying for things for a really long time and waiting and waiting and hoping and, and all these things. And uh, how do we get to a breakthrough? Well, there's a great model for breakthrough prayer in Daniel chapter nine. Daniel is an epic book. You've got to read it. Uh, it's the story of a 15-year-old boy who, when he's 15 years old, the whole nation of Israel is captured. He's carried off into captivity, but God still gives him great favor, and he ends up in positions of great influence, even in this captive country. Some amazing rescues, epic story. Check it out in the book of Daniel. But today, we're going to lean in on Daniel chapter 9. In chapter 9, we find Daniel is now 85 years old and that's really important because that's exactly 70 years after he was carried off into captivity and in that time for all of those years he must have been praying for his whole nation to be reunited where they had been captive from for god to finally rescue his people and put the nation back together he'd been praying and praying and praying for a breakthrough so we're gonna look today at six steps, learning straight from Daniel, six steps for breakthrough prayer. When we've been praying for so long and are desperate for a breakthrough, how could we pray? The first one is this, we let God speak to us before we speak to him. We start with what God has said. Daniel is um, in captivity and he reads the scripture and realizes that it has been the right amount of time, 70 years. God had said that Israel would be captive for 70 years and Daniel realizes that. So he prays even more desperately over and over and over for God to rescue his people. In fact, in Daniel chapter 9 verse 2, it says this, During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem was to lie desolate for 70 years. So he's in God's word and realizing the thing I've been praying for, God said how long it would be. And so he prayed with even more fervor, realizing that the time was right, that God had said he would do this. And if we're going to pray for breakthrough, we listen to what God has said first. The many, many promises in the Bible, the, his character that is in the scripture, we want to know what he has already said so that we can pray in that direction. Jesus encouraged us to do this. In John chapter 15, verse 7, it says this, If you stay connected to me and my words remain in your heart, you may ask any request you want in prayer and it'll be given to you. What Jesus is saying is if you want to know how to pray, know what I've already promised. Pray in the direction I've already pointed you. In fact, Rick Warren says it this way, that the more you fill your mind with the scripture, the more your prayers will be answered because you'll be praying according to the word of God. God's already said these things and we can pray in that direction. So Daniel prays and he prays bold prayers for a breakthrough and for a rescue for his nation, but in line with what God has said. We listen to what he has to say before we speak. Then we move on and we focus our attention on God. Daniel chapter 9 verse 3 says this. Daniel says, I gave my attention to the Lord to seek him in prayer. This may ring a bell with some things that Jesus said. Ask, seek, knock. Over and over, God invites us to come after him. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17, God says, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. In Jeremiah 29, 13, the same prophet who told Daniel there'd be 70 years. Jeremiah says, you will seek me. God says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. That our attention, our drive, our dependence, our trust is on him and we come after him. These are active words that we come after him. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, God rewards those who earnestly seek him. If you want the reward of God's presence in your life and his favor on what you're doing, then seek him, come after him, know what he said, and focus on him. In fact, many of the hardships in our lives are because we didn't seek him. We didn't ask if we should buy that house or that car or take that job or get into that relationship. We just went out on our own and hoped for the best. 
But instead what God says is, no, 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 invite me in. Let me lead the way. Go the way I've called you to. Seek after me. So instead of just continuing to go our own way, if we really want breakthrough, let's consider what is it that we hope for, that we long for. And then ask yourself this question. How often have you been asking God what he wants with that? So we let him speak first. We focus on him. And number three, we express our desires with emotion. Daniel does this. Uh, In verse three, it says this. He says, I prayed earnestly to the Lord God, pleading with him. These are emotional words. Uh, Chapter nine, verse four says, I poured out my heart, bearing my soul to God, my God. God knows our hearts and our desires, and he's willing to to shape them, we bring all of our heart, all of our emotion, all of our passion to him. In fact, I love the way Rick Warren talks about this. He says, when was the last time you prayed passionately or desperately? It's probably right. It was probably the last time we were in significant pain or hurt that we called out with desperation and pleading with God. We can pray like that all the time. If we're desperate for a breakthrough, let's plead with him from the center of who we are. Well, when we express it with emotion, the next thing Daniel did was he demonstrated his seriousness. And we can do the same thing. We demonstrate our seriousness. In chapter 9, verse 3, again, Daniel says, I did not eat any food. And to show my sadness, I put on sackcloth and sat in ashes. Daniel wanted God to know this was not a flippant request. This was not a side note. What he was asking for was not unimportant. He was going to show how important it was with his actions. And so he fasted, which literally means to stop eating food, to stop consuming food. God, this is so important. I'm not even going to eat. It is a powerful, powerful thing. Now, do we have, are we coaxing God into doing what we want? Are we trying to control him? Not at all. We're just demonstrating our desperation. In fact, uh, the people over at Saddleback have included a great Bible study at the end of your book that talks about fasting, if you have more questions about that. But we see this pattern in Scripture over and over and over. When people are serious about something, ready for a breakthrough, asking God to intervene in a supernatural way, their prayers often came along with the time of fasting. What Daniel does next is he he takes time to thank God for his love and for his promises. And this is really a gift to us that when we thank God for who he is and we remember what he has said, it fills us up with confidence. It reminds us, it brings that peace that God promises us in Philippians chapter 4. In Daniel 9 uh, verse 4 says this, Daniel says, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed. Oh Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and who obey your commands. I love this. His first confession is not of brokenness. His first confession, his statement of agreement, which is what confession means, to agree with God, is how awesome he is, how strong he is, how good he's been. In verse 9, he goes on, he says, Lord God, you are merciful and forgiving, even though we've rebelled against you. But Daniel goes on beyond expressing his emotion and he says, look, 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 God, I know who you are. I'm remembering who you are and how strong you are and all the things that you have done, which fills us up with confidence that God will do the right thing. And finally, this last step of of a model for breakthrough prayer, we humbly confess our sin. That often what has prevented God from acting in our lives or lives of, of people around us is that we're just not going his way. We're going our own way, doing our own thing. And this is exactly why Daniel's people, the people of Israel, had ended up in captivity. They refused to do what God said. And so God said, okay, but the natural consequence of that is you're going to be captured and carried away. Daniel, after 70 years, takes responsibility with God, not only for his own failings, but for the failings of the whole nation. He says this in chapter 9, uh, starting in verse 5. Daniel says, but we have sinned terribly by rebelling against you and rejecting your laws and teachings. We've ignored the message your servants, the prophets, spoke to us. We have been unfaithful and have sinned against you. We have rebelled against you and rejected your teachings. Daniel takes ownership that a lot of what got him where he is and what got his nation where they were was their own sin and rebellion. 
And so the breakthrough was needed, but they needed to own part of what had gotten them there. In fact, uh, in verse nine, chapter nine, verse 18, it says this, my God, listen to me and hear my request. We don't ask because we deserve help, but because you are so merciful. Daniel owns it. And he just says, God, if there's anything that we need to own in the way of this, we own that. And sure enough, after praying for a breakthrough like this, God sends a breakthrough. In chapter nine, verse 20, it says, while I kept on praying, did you catch that? He kept on praying. We'll talk more about diligence and prayer later, but for now, he, Daniel was diligent. He kept on praying 70 years. And even in the promised year, he kept on praying and confessing my sin and the sins of my people and pleading with the Lord. And suddenly the angel Gabriel appeared in my vision and said to me, Daniel, I've been sent to help you understand God's plan. The moment you began praying, the moment you began praying, the answer was given, and I'm here to tell it to you. For God loves you very much. We'll talk more uh, uh, about when God answers prayer and how to keep on and how to be diligent in that. But for right now, I want to encourage you, keep on praying. What breakthrough do you need? Call one to mind. Consider discussing it here with your group and praying together. And let's pray like Daniel did and count on God to show up in a supernatural way at just the right time. Have a great discussion.